So now that we've finished up going over the R tips of the day, let's talk about hypothesis testing and what it is. We often want to check basic facts about a population. So for example, I may have heard that 4% of the US population was infected by the flu in 2016. And I might want to know, is that true? Is that, you know, within the realm of possibility, maybe based on a data set that I have access to? I might also have heard a statement like, is the mean value of a healthy one-year-old baby girl in the US 21 pounds? So faced with that question, and if I have a data set with, you know, one-year-old baby girls and their weights, I might want to know, is it plausible or possible that the mean weight of a one-year-old baby girl in the US is 21 pounds? So other times we want to compare two groups. So as opposed to ba checking basic facts of, about a population where we have like one column of data and we're trying to check some aspect of that against a fixed value like 4% or 21 pounds. In the second situation, we might have two or more groups and we want to know whether those two groups um, are similar on some characteristic or if they're different. So for example, we might want to know, do people taking cholesterol lowering medications have fewer heart attacks than people with high cholesterol not on the same medications? Or we might want to know, depending on your water supply, does that make a difference in your lead level? So if you have lead pipes, um, is that associated with having higher lead levels when you get your blood checked? And you would think, you know, why do we need hypothesis testing to answer this question? Last week, we learned about visualization as a powerful tool. Can't we just use visualization? Or can't we just check our data set and see if our data set has uh, a, you know, 4% prevalence of flu or incidence of flu. And if 4% of the people in our data set have flu and there it's new flu that was diagnosed in 2016, aren't we done? Like, what is the point of a test? So the question is, do we know the weight of all one-year-old babies in the US? If we knew the weight of all one-year-old babies in the US, then we actually wouldn't even need a statistical test. I could answer that question for you because I could just calculate the you know, weight or the, uh, the mean weight of one-year-old babies in the U.S. and tell you this is what um, the actual mean weight is. So no, it's not 21, it's 21.02. However, most of the time we don't have access to data from the entire population of interest. And so if we did, it wouldn't really be a question we would need to answer with a statistical test because we could just answer it directly. But since we usually don't have access to population level data, uh, we consider running hypothesis tests. So let's say we surveyed 100 randomly selected baby, baby girls in the US and we arrived at a mean weight of 22 pounds based on those randomly selected baby girls. Is it still possible that the true mean is 21 for the population that includes all one-year-old baby girls in the US? I would say it's probably possible. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, certainly possible that it just happened to be the case that in the 100 baby girls we selected, it was 22, but that if we were to have data from everyone that, you know, uh, that the actual mean would be 21. And what if our survey had arrived at a mean weight of 25? Is it possible for the population to have a mean weight of 21 for this group? And you can imagine that as the difference of what we're finding uh, in our population and what we are thinking we're going to find in our population gets larger and larger, it becomes increasingly unlikely that the fact in our population that we want to test is actually true. So for example, if in our data set we found that the mean weight was 22 pounds for 100 randomly selected baby girls, if someone asked me, is it possible that in fact in the US the mean weight is 70 pounds, I would say that even though our sample is really small, that sounds pretty unlikely that the US population for this, uh, you know, for one-year-old baby girls could have a mean weight of 70 pounds if our data set had 
uh, a mean weight of only 22 pounds. So this is why there's some uncertainty around that estimate of 22 pounds. And that can help us answer whether, you know, a basic fact might be true based on some observed data that we have. And as our sample gets bigger and bigger, uh, then, you know, our level of certainty around that estimate gets more and more certain or, you know, our error around that estimate gets more and more narrow. So the more evidence we have, the more people we have in our survey, the, you know, assuming that it's still a randomly selected sample um, and not a purposeful sample, we can start to get more and more confidence that, you know, the mean weight of the babies in our data set matches the mean weight uh, in babies across the US. So when we do not have access to the entire population, we need to have some idea of the level of uncertainty of a given measurement based on the fact that it comes from a sample. And hopefully it comes from a random sample and not a purposeful sample, which can make it you know, biased in some way. The stakes here are pretty high. You know, if we want to know if a given drug works in a clinical trial, um, we might want to know, is there a difference in time to death between cancer drug number one and cancer drug number two? And if we run a hypothesis test and we find a statistically significant difference of one week in time to death between the two drugs, is this meaningful? It might be statistically significant, but whether it's meaningful and whether the FDA should approve this drug really depends on context. Is that one week of life extension important in the situation uh, that, you know, that drug is being provided? What is the difference in quality of life on, on people who are getting drug number one versus drug number two? So realize that while a statistical test can tell us if there's a statistically significant difference you know, between two groups or between a group um, and a fixed value, it can't tell us whether that difference is clinically meaningful or actionable in some way. And the larger a sample size, the smaller the effects we can detect. So if we did, we, you know, if we have a lot, a big sample, we can maybe detect a, a difference of one week um, in time to death. That doesn't mean that's actually meaningful and that this drug should necessarily be approved. So let's talk about how we formulate a hypothesis test. First, we actually formulate what a negative result would look like. Um, and this is usually the opposite of what our actual hypothesis might be. And so the actual hypothesis is often termed the alternative hypothesis. And so for example, we might start with the initial assumption that based on what we know, there should be no difference um, in time to death between cancer drugs number one and two. This is our null hypothesis because we're starting with what would be true under the situation of a negative result where kind of everything is the same or everything matches what, would it, what was expected. And now we find a difference of one week. What we want to know is what's the probability that a one week or more difference in survival is, pos you know, is possible based on our data, which is what we observed, um, if our null hypothesis were to be true. I know there's a lot of double negatives there, so let me just walk through that one more time. What we want to know is, sure, our null hypothesis was that there's no difference between cancer drugs number one and two. Our data set is a sample. It's not all of the data on everyone who could possibly have gotten the drug. It's just from a random sample of the population. And so based on our sample of data that we have, what's the chance that we would find a one week or more difference in survival in that data set? And yet the population still has really no true difference between cancer drugs one and two. So what is the probability that we find this one week or more difference in survival uh, by chance alone? 
This probability that I'm referring to here is something you've probably come across if you've read any scientific paper, because this probability um, is often termed the p-value. 